Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And we're pleased to have you join us today. As you know, every month we strive to focus on a different department, department head, their roles and responsibilities. And today we are just tickled for you to, if you haven't met him already, the new sheriff of Sheboygan County, Corey Raisler. Welcome. Thank you. I can't tell you how pleased we are that Corey was appointed by the governor into this role. He's been with the Sheriff's Department for 27 years, and I've known him for nearly 20, and we just feel so good about his role and uh, the job he does with the, with the law enforcement community, and, and we're looking forward to getting to know him a little bit better today. So please join us in getting to know Corey, roles and responsibilities of the Sheriff's Department, and let's start with yourself, Corey. Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure, well, I'm originally uh, from just out of Sheboygan County uh, in the rural Keel area. Uh, I grew up uh, on a farm uh, with my parents. Um, I have two wonderful parents, Fred and Judy. Uh, they, <clears throat> I assume, raised me right, uh, obviously, in making it to uh, where I've made it so far and uh, really instilled the, um, the really great um, work ethic that I have and uh, my personality skills, uh, everything I get from my, from my parents. So, yeah. uh, so growing up in Keel, um, I went to Keele High School, so I'm an alum, a 1988 alum of Keele High School. I went to three and a half years of high school, got out early, graduated in three and a half years. Well, I went to Marine Park Technical College in, in Fond du Lac, uh, only stayed there for a year and a half out of my two years uh, for the associate degree and graduated early. Uh, from there I was <clears throat> just turning uh, 19 when I, I was hired at the Keele Police Department as a dispatcher part-time and a part-time road officer. Uh, from there, um, I had actually some difficulty getting a job being just uh, over 18 and early 19. Um, so I was hired by the Columbia County Sheriff's Department uh, near Madison. And uh, I stayed down there for a year before um, opportunities opened up back home again in, in Sheboygan County. So from uh, there, I, I started as a road deputy in 1991. Uh, I had really great experiences, great people I worked with, um, great supervisors. Um, a mentor of mine, Mike Helmke, eventually went on to be sheriff. Uh, really uh, had a great nine or ten year uh, career on the road. Um, saw some opportunities to promote uh, into a corporal position. And then from there, um, I had an opportunity to be a detective for several years. Um, gained a lot of knowledge working in the drug unit. Uh, drug unit uh, afforded me a lot of opportunities, a lot of freedom, a lot of um, <clears throat> ability to work with different people, different agencies throughout the state. Um, that really have benefited uh, my career uh, as we move forward. Uh, and an opportunity to um, take over and be the lieutenant of uh, the detectives. Um, and eventually um, in 2006 was promoted to captain of patrol. And in 2015 took over uh, as a dual role with the uh, captain of the criminal investigations division. And um, Sheriff Preby uh, announced that he was going to retire early. And it was a goal of mine uh, to be the sheriff. So uh, I initially thought that the election in, in 2018 was going to be my first opportunity, um, but the appointment for the governor came uh, early, and uh, so I worked hard and strived to get everything done that we needed to do to um, get the application in and the interview process, and I uh, had a wonderful interview with the governor uh, and uh, obviously received the appointment. So here we are today. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great story, and talk about a tremendous resume and background. There's you know so much about the sheriff's department and the people that work there and the good work that happens in the community as a whole and uh, Tom and I both sent letters of support to the governor as you know as did our area legislators there was a lot of enthusiasm for your interest in being appointed and I know we've talked in the past about possibly you being sheriff one day so we're just very proud and pleased to see you appointed and look forward to working with you more closely going forward. You started off by mentioning your parents and Chairman Wagner and I both attended the, the swearing in ceremony with a lot of your other uh, friends and, and co-workers and uh, one of the more moving if not the most moving swearing in uh, functions that I've ever attended and it was short and sweet but uh, you, you selected one of our newer judges and just, just touch briefly on what that day meant to you. Sure. Um, well, Judge Hoffman has been very supportive um, in helping me from the get-go uh, as far as where to initially uh, find how to apply uh, for the opening, uh, as well as uh, the process in general. Um, he's also been very supportive of um, our other swearing-ins that we do for, for new officers. So I felt it was important to see if he would be willing to do it, and he, he was honored. 
Um, I was honored to have my parents there, um, honored to have all my friends and family there. And, and like I said, just a very special day and very emotional as we talked about um, getting to the point in life where, like I said, you value every day that you have with your parents or your uh, family and relatives and stuff like that. So um, just, a, just a great, wonderful day overall. Yeah, it sure was. It sure was. So 27 years with the Sheriff's Department, you're into your second week of Sheriff. What do you see as your key challenges moving forward? Well, you're right. I have 10 days in, so I'm uh, very experienced and uh, ready to go. But uh, a lot of challenges I, I see coming forward are, as, and we'll probably talk more uh, in the future about uh, the, the jail and really monitoring the jail population. Uh, the jail population is something that's important to me. I know it's important to the county board. Um, I, I monitor it every day, uh, looking at uh, how the spikes are and, and how we're moving up and down and, and really looking at uh, whether or not we need to expand or not, uh, whether we need to look at other alternatives. Uh, and different uh, uh, programs coming up and what we can do to benefit and try to keep, uh, keep our offenders um, out of jail and, and back on the right track. Um, uh, so that's one a challenge I see coming forward. I, I think another real challenge, um, which for Sheboygan County is, is, is it's a good challenge to have, but it's a bad challenge. Uh, we're very blessed right now with uh, one of the lowest jobless rates uh, in the county. Um, both the county board, uh, the governor, everyone has done an excellent job of really trying to get people back to work. And that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. Now, when you're an employer and you're looking back and trying to find quality employees yeah. and you see who you're competing with, uh, I think that's going to be one of our biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. um, we evaluate our employment uh, um, every six months just to see uh, whether we need to start another hiring process. And, and in doing so, we really scrutinize the applications we're getting and really have to kind of look at the qualifications that we're using. We're competing against a lot of, of wonderful local partners for me um, that uh, are, are also looking for employees and, and some of them are taking our employees from us um, and we're taking some from them. But you have to look at some of the roles that we do, whether it's uh, a deputy or a, a secretary, a dispatcher, a correctional officer. Um, you have to look at the role that we're doing and, and how Sheboygan County is going to attract and retain right. uh, those employees. So I think that's going to be our, our, our biggest challenge coming forward as far as looking to try to uh, really attract quality em employees, mm -hmm. um, looking at um, different ways to, to retain them. And uh, we really... Uh, stick a lot of uh, financial um, money into uh, the hiring and the retaining. Uh, when you look at our training phases for a lot of different um, jobs that we have, they're anywhere from, from 10 weeks to three months. And if you look at what uh, a wage for that, those employees are over that period of time, it's, it's a huge investment. Um, so we, we take it very seriously in the hiring process. Mm -hmm. We want the best employees for Sheboygan County that we can train and get to the point where we're comfortable with them working on their own, but there comes times when you have to cut ties as well. Right. That's more of a, a something that's a mutual agreement. When we're not getting enough employees to, to fill the positions and having to repost and compete against a lot of other businesses, um, that's, that's really where the, the real struggle is going to be in the future. And, and again, we look at some different recruiting uh, tactics and right. um, we look for the support of the county board. Um, they've been very supportive in, in other divisions and departments of, of looking at creative ways to try to, um, to lure employees. So. And as we know, we're in good company because Tom and I uh, tour some of the uh, businesses across the county and we have so many uh, wonderful businesses and local owners and they do so many good things for the community, but it's pretty much the same theme we Absolutely. hear throughout is recruiting mm -hmm. and retaining good employees. And, as you said, whether it's the Sheriff's Department, Corrections, our Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center and CNAs, social workers, accountants, where we used to get dozens of applicants, maybe hundreds of applicants, uh, now it's it might be 10 or 12 or four or five. I mean, it's really a different situation, so we're all struggling with that. And the detention center, as you mentioned, we the last thing we want to do is spend millions of dollars to expand our detention center, but we are nearing capacity and uh, hopefully we can focus on alternatives more than mm -hmm. building, but another key challenge ahead of us. So you, you helped a little bit. You, you obviously shared some insight about yourself and you talked about the detention center. That's one responsibility of the Sheriff's Department, but big picture, if someone's watching today and they really don't have any feel for what the Sheriff's Department does, what are the key areas of responsibility? Oh, we have a lot. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> 
we, we really take anything from the call that initially comes into our, our dispatch center. Um, and as we talked about earlier with jobs, you can look at each one of the, the areas I talk about as several jobs involved with it. Um, and you can also look at um, kind of rolling it out as how the department works in general. So we have a, a dispatch center um, that we have uh, approximately 20 dispatchers uh, and supervisors that uh, are working within that uh, communication center. Uh, as uh, you probably have talked about in previous uh, conversations with others, uh, we have a joint dispatch center now with the city. Um, so we're working uh, with all the police agencies as one dispatch center. Um, and so everything kind of comes into our dispatch center and then um, we move it into our uh, either a road deputy. Um, we have uh, 39 road deputies. Uh, then we have several other deputies that work in the courts uh, as part of our uh, cr uh, civil process division. And then we have a criminal investigation division uh, where we employ uh, approximately uh, seven detectives along with supervisors. And we also have a multi-jurisdictional uh, drug unit uh, where we have uh, other agencies supplying officers along with the sheriff's department uh, to help combat some of the drug issues that we have. Uh, and then uh, we have a support services uh, where all of our uh, uh, clerical staff work, um, whether it's filing some of the paperwork that the deputies are doing, making it, uh, different arrangements for um, some of the uh, jail and correctional facilities, whether it's accounting, um, everyone that we're responsible for when we get to the correction side uh, basically is um, has some type of accounting, uh, whether they have a canteen where they're able to provide money um, to a service where they can uh, buy things from uh, while they're uh, incarcerated with us, or whether they're on uh, Huber Law and they're paying some Huber fees uh, in order to uh, continue on with that process. So we go into the uh, the correction staff, which is our largest uh, area. Uh, we have around uh, 70 employees in our correctional staff. So we have 194 total employees. We employ uh, part-time uh, officers as well that uh, really have uh, helped us financially um, uh, as far as the financial impact uh, and still providing a service that we can uh, transport inmates back and forth at a, at a much lesser cost uh, and do a lot of other services that um, before were um, possibly done in overtime. So uh, <clears throat> we have, a, like I said, 100 and, 194 employees, um, all of which play a key role uh, in the day-to-day -day functions uh, of the Sheriff's Department. And to put that in perspective, we have 19 departments, about 840 employees, about a $150 million budget, and we always fondly refer to our big four being the Sheriff's Department, Health and Human Services, Transportation, and Rocky Knoll. And last question before I turn it over to Tom, so what is the Sheriff's total budget for supporting those staff and the good work that you do? Uh, we have around a $20 million budget, um, $17.9 million approximately. Uh, is, is budget uh, where we are, are uh, requesting that money. And then another roughly um, 2.1 million comes from revenue, uh, comes from other uh, fees that are collected and- uh, 17 uh, million property tax levy and correct. three million or so with federal or state resources, correct. grants, yeah. Yep. Thank you, Corey. Mm -hmm. And of course your operation is 24 seven too, that people have to remember that relative to, I think people uh, don't always think of that in that regard, but whether it's Christmas or, or yeah. Easter, your, your people are out there. You, you bet, we have people out there, like I said, 24 seven, we, we, we can't close. Um, if the weather's bad and no one can get out, we can't close. Uh, we have to do the best we can. We have wonderful partnerships and working relationships with our other uh, departments, uh, the highway department. When we talk about the snowstorm, and we're hoping that this year we have none, um, so we don't have to worry about it. But on, on large, so doesn't Greg Schnell. Exactly, <laughs> yes. But on large snowstorms, uh, it, it's not uh, uh, unrealistic to see a snowplow uh, leading a, a squad or an ambulance uh, to get someplace um, that we have to get to. So those are all partnerships that we talk about with other with other departments. Right, and that kind of led right into my question of building partnerships. Uh, you want to talk about that at all? You kind of sure. already did. Sure, I think one of the things, uh, I don't want to say it's my strong, my strong point, but one of the things that really benefited me um, and, and some things I left out in, the, in my original part is I was also the chief in Cascade on a part-time right. police department. Yeah. And that really had helped me build the bridges and the partnerships with the other law enforcement agencies, the fire chiefs, the fire departments, EMS, uh, along with uh, the captain's position at the sheriff's department, really allowing me to, um, to work with our health and human services when it comes to some of the, the endangered children and the drug issues and the, the different things we have as far as uh, helping with the transports of the, of the juveniles. Um, all the way over to the highway department, as we talked about, you know, 
we're not going to get anywhere without them in that snowstorm. And, and when it comes to the, the um, safety of their workers, they're not going to get anywhere without our help and try to provide them some safety uh, while they're out working on the highway. So sure. those partnerships, whether it's departmental, uh, other EMS or police, and then we really, really uh, dive into the, the, pu the public sector. I mean, the relationships that I've really had a, a fortune to have with local businesses and, and community members and county board members and other uh, board members from different communities and the ability to go and talk at the town board meetings and really try to work on the issues that we have uh, in the community and keeping them informed really, like I said, is kind of really my springboard to having the opportunity that I did uh, and, and being able to be appointed sheriff. Um, when we talk about the letters that were written, there were so many letters written on behalf of, whether it's the district attorney's office or mm -hmm. uh, the county administrator's office, other uh, county and, and town board and, and village board members that wrote letters in support, like I said, it all goes into that relationship building that you have. And, and it's one of those things where, as I talked about with the highway department, you hope that you don't need it. But boy, yeah. when you need it, it sure is nice to have mm -hmm. that you can, you can pick up yeah. the phone and call and say, hey, Greg, on a, on a personal basis, I, I really need this. Yeah. And, and he knows that I'm not going to call mm -hmm. unless it's important that we need to get this done or we need to have you know, a different role. Uh, the, working with the police chief, uh, whether it's in any of the jurisdictions, uh, more specifically the city, having a good working relationship with him, um, again, trying to, to, to accommodate everything that we need. We look at it as, I'm fortunate all the cities and, and municipalities are in the, in the county of Sheboygan. Right. So we have jurisdiction everywhere. So if we can help and we can partner with them to do the different projects uh, that's really beneficial uh, and really makes things a lot easier because everyone pays taxes. Absolutely. You know, that, whether you're in the city or in the county. And I know they count on you in that regard in mm -hmm. many instances. And you can't put a price tag on building right. relationships. Exactly. It's worth an awful lot. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about expectations for your department staff? Yeah, uh, we have a new mission statement. Uh, the mission statement Solid. is, is uh, uh, to protect and serve uh, the citizens of our community uh, by reducing fear, crime, and disorder. Um, it's kind of old school. Um, for anyone that's involved in law enforcement, it's kind of back to the, back to the roots um, of, of where we came from. Uh, it's, it's very, um, very easy to remember. Uh, that helps for my employees. You don't want something that's too complicated. Um, and we really want to instill the values uh, on our employees um, of... Uh, professionalism, uh, respect, integrity, dedication, and the employee value. And if you look at those, they all spell pride. And that's the key thing I guess I'm looking for in my employees. And that is if, if they're proud uh, of themselves at work, at home, and in the community, that's going to resonate through to uh, their, their actual job. And I have, I have a high expectations for our employees. Um, I, I think that uh, me as myself, I'm a worker. Um, and, and I instill that on them that um, I, I, don't, I don't tolerate people who aren't, uh, aren't workers as well. Yeah. And we, we have a responsibility. Um, the, the taxpayers of Sheboygan County pay our wages. Uh, there's expectations on their behalf. And I fully feel that we need to fulfill those expectations. Thank you. Um, I know you have some additional funding sometimes that's provided to the Sheriff's Department that mm -hmm. offsets some of the... Uh, the budget relative to what the county board provides. Uh, you want to talk about some of that? Sure. We kind of talked a little bit about the the funding for um, our correctional uh, facility. Uh, we get some jail revenue um, that's brought in. There's uh, certain revenue off of uh, uh, any arrest or citation. Uh, some money comes back to the to the county for jail assessment. Um, the jail has a lot of uh, different programs that uh, people pay for. Um, Huber Law, you pay to be on Huber Law and get out. Uh, a portion of your check is taken off to help pay for your stay. Um, we get into a lot of uh, village and town contracts. And then um, we've really tried to do a lot through state grants and other grants that are available. Um, right now, uh, we uh, receive $100,000 in grant money for additional traffic enforcement, uh, mainly for the State Highway 23. Um, I'll call it a project, but obviously it's a, a project that's on hold. Right. Um, so we spend a lot of time out there. So any of the viewers that are watching should know yeah. that uh, State Highway 23 between Sheboygan and Fond du Lac has, has really been a dangerous highway over the years. And we're focusing our time in conjunction with a, a joint task force with Fond du Lac County, really trying to put in perspective that we want people to obey the traffic laws. Uh, we want you to kind of 
take a couple minutes extra and, and, and just breathe before you get on 23 and know that um, if there's going to be violations, we're going to enforce them. Yeah. And we, we, we have a lot, of, a lot of success out there. So. Yeah. I've seen your people out there, and I can't mm -hmm. tell you how important I think that is because I, as Adam and I have both uh, did, tried to move that for project forward mm -hmm. as best we can. It's in federal court at this point. Yep. It is a dangerous road, and it's rather obvious. And that's just another example of how there's money, which is through a state grant, sure. so there's recognition that it is dangerous, yep. and we need to do something. And the nice part about that is uh, that grant actually came about um, basically at a brainstorming session uh, at one of our meetings um, where um, myself and one of the other captains from Fond du Lac kind of looked at each other and I said, hey, how about a task force as long as the state is looking at other areas they want to fund? Uh, and it initially started out with 40000 um, and now we're able to use some of that money um, to fund other agencies uh, for issues that they have, whether it's in you know, the city of Sheboygan, um, uh, Plymouth or Elkhart Lake or wherever it may be for Road America and different events, we're actually able to put extra bodies out to try and make yeah. it a safer event for everybody uh, coming and going. So yeah, It definitely uh, helps. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little bit about, I know you have um, contracts with some of the other mm -hmm. locals who don't have a local police department. You want to talk about those a little bit? Sure. We're, we're very fortunate to have great partnerships and working relationships with, uh, with many of the villages. Oostburg, Cedar Grove, Random Lake, uh, Town of Holland, uh, Glen Beulah. Um, so in doing so, some of these other agencies aren't necessarily big enough to support having their own police department. When you look at financially, uh, a squad car is anywhere between fifty and 70000 to actually set up and, and, and start out with. Now you're looking at paying the insurance for the officers and paying for insurance for the vehicle and, and equipping it and equipping the officer. So we're able to take a portion of the day um, and they pro provide us funding um, to send an officer down there for two or three hours a day. Uh, in some instances, some instances it's, it's 19 or 20 hours a month, um, but it's that extra little bit of, of patrol that you get, uh, extra little bit of ordinance enforcement um, to kind of take care of some of the small things uh, that really uh, benefits both places. It's obviously uh, money that we're able to generate, but it also provides that police services for that local jurisdiction, which is very important because, like I said, a lot of them can't really afford it and uh, they, they really want that extra protection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to talk about any of the uh, challenges and, that are escalating within your department? Well, I think some of, the, some of the challenges that we're looking at, especially when it comes to, for the citizens of, of Sheboygan County, uh, the op opioid uh, abuse um, and deaths are, are something that are uh, on everyone's mind. Um, to put it kind of in, in context, uh, Sheboygan County this year is going to finish with eight or nine uh, fatalities, depending upon how some of them are actually designated uh, as we get to the end of the year. Um, and that's an average, and, and that's pretty average for us. A, a, a county our size um, really has uh, a lot of, of miles traveled. Um, so if you really kind of took into account thinking how many people are going to come through Sheboygan County, maybe 100,000 vehicles on, on a daily basis, uh, or so, um, and how many people uh, are, are fatally injured, uh, it, it's really a small comparison. But when you look at how many people are in Sheboygan County and how many people die of some type of drug overdose, uh, we really get to the point where we, we see the problem. We're probably going to finish 2017 with over 20 uh, overdose deaths yeah. uh, in the county. We've already had at least one or two this year already, and we're only you know a few days into it. Yeah, I read some in the paper, and sometimes some people will put it within their obituary, right. and yep. uh, others will not, and other times, right. unfortunately, you can read through right. it. Yeah, it is a growing issue. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'll turn it back to Adam, I think, at this point. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you raised that, because we only have a couple of minutes remaining, but that's been a key emphasis of Chairman Tom Wagner and the County Board, our Health and Human Services Department. As you know, we've established now a drug and alcohol court and we ha we're providing more services than ever before for this, but the law enforcement angle is so important, and not only your department, but uh, the city of Sheboygan. Uh, uh, they've done a lot to raise awareness, mm -hmm. but it continues to be a battle, and that helps put it in perspective when you talk about seven or eight deaths due to traffic accidents and over 20 because of taking opioids. It's, it's a sad situation. We need to continue to focus on it. I think it's right back where we talked about with the partnerships. You know, it's the partnership with Health and Human Services. It's the partnership with the other departments. It's, it's the department with the state. You know, all looking for different ways and, and, and trying to not reinvent the wheel for something that's working in Fond du Lac. Let's, let's use that too. Right, right. Well, Corey, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here 10 days into your service as sheriff at a, 
on our TV8 program, the first of 2018. We're, we're glad that you could join us. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact Sheriff Raisler or a member of his team. And speaking of your team, you know, uh, I often think of Inspector Rasu because obviously Inspector Rasu is the right hand of the, of the sheriff, helped with the transition between former Sheriff Todd Preby and now current Sheriff Corey Raisler. And uh, the inspector sometimes I think is one of those unsung heroes there that helps a lot with the administration and good work that the Sheriff's Department does. But a shout out to Jim and all of the staff at the Sheriff's Department who are helping make good things happen in this community and uh, do so many things that many of us will never be aware of to make sure the community is safe and a wonderful place to, to live and raise a family and, and have some fun. Our dispatchers in particular, that, that whole combined dispatch and how, how effectively uh, that was implemented at the Sheriff's Department reflects well on Corey and uh, certainly Inspector Rasu and Christy DeBlay and so many other people there. So thank you for that. Thank you for joining us this month. Next month we're going to have Kayla Clinton here from Rocky Knoll, one of our newer department heads as well. Kayla just started about six months ago, is doing a tremendous job at our Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center. You can get to know her and le learn more about Rocky Knoll. But until then, thank you for joining us. Drive safe. And uh, again, thank you, Corey, for joining us today. Thank you. Be well. Thank you.